Well, hello, everyone. I am really happy to have a fun interview lined up for you today. We have a full house. As you can see, we have three different people besides myself. We have the Cleveland family, originally out of Breckenridge, Minnesota. We have Al, Allison, and Anna joining us today. It's really, really fun uh, group of family and uh, get to know them a little bit. So how are you all doing? Great. Good, how are you? Doing well. It's really great weather this weekend. I'm hoping to start racing season next week. The weather is not totally cooperating with that plan though yeah i know uh since you guys are kind of located close to me you're, like the weather's been pretty familiar down in fargo i'm, at, I'm actually in mine at, for this weekend and so uh getting yep. spoiled with 60 and 70 degree weather uh how with the winter off season kind of coming to an end are you guys close to getting the racing stuff done that's a good question <laughs> <laughs> uh we're going to probably make it for the tour June 1st and then we'll run the super stock tour. Uh, we like, we have the last few years and, uh, I really have a lot of fun with that. Um, so that's kind of our game plan for right now. There's a couple of shows here coming up in Fergus at I-94 Speedway. And I would like to try and make those, but, uh, we'll just have to see what, what life brings us. <laughs> so, Yep. Yeah. So, so for those that don't know, the Cleveland family, they race primarily super stocks. They've been racing that for the last several years. Um, I'll start with Al since he's probably has the most veteran experience out of everyone here. How long have yep. you been racing and have you raced anything besides the super stock? Yeah, I've kind of raced everything, but a sprint car. Uh, I started in 1988. So, um, kind of a long, long time ago in a mini stock did that a couple of years. We ran outlaw streets when Fargo and, Jamestown, Lisbon, uh, a lot of tracks around were running kind of an outlaw street before um, before the Wasota streets came into the area. And then some of the tracks, Mandan, and some of those switched to what they called the Dakota Street. And for those guys, it was a real easy switch to the Wasota streets. So that's kind of what they did. Fargo ran that outlaw street class until... 1995 was the last year and then 1996 they jumped into super stocks got rid of the hobbies and i think they did keep the outlaw streets for a while or something real similar to it but uh yeah we did that 90 1995 we ourselves ran a late model on asphalt when uh sock center racetrack was open and the i-94 and fergus they were both black top so we spent uh the summer race on that and then since 1996 i've had a super stock other than a few years I've taken off. So. Gotcha. So you, so you know, the transitions uh, throughout the last few years of super stocks and not much has really changed that from what I've heard with the super right. stock class. Yeah. Yeah. I'm running the same car. Allison drove, I think, I don't know if it was 2017 or 2018. Allison raced the whole summer and I sat on the side and, and we had a lot of fun with that and she got to race uh few different tracks and and uh chase around and that was a lot of fun and yeah it's the same car as as that year and and really super stocks other than uh going changing the clutch and um flywheel setup and then changing the burt transmission really we haven't changed much of anything and it's made it probably the most affordable class out there because i've had one for more than 25 years and haven't had to spend a whole lot of new money ever so yeah and i remember talking to anna i believe it was either this week or the last and reminded me that allison raced this super stock and i completely forgot about that did that take a lot of convincing allison to get you behind the wheel no not at all <laughs> um i don't really have much to say about it though <laughs> um dad gave me so we first started go-kart racing. Um, and we, when did we do that dad? That would have been when I took the five years off. So probably like 2002 to 2006, I suppose. And Anna and I both raced. Um, so, and then I haven't touched a car since then. So it was kind of fun to get back into it just for that few times that I did. Um, you know, and I, I'd, I'd still like to get into it again, you know, just, just one time here, maybe one time there, not necessarily a, a whole summer long or a whole season long so it was pretty fun yeah where did you race uh go-karts i assume west fargo was probably one of the places yep west fargo and staples okay at the indoor track in the winter time there i i always wish growing up that we had a go-kart track to kind of like get 
the youth involved in racing. I would have, well, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Anna, have you been behind the wheel of a race car yet competitively or just kind of for leisure sake? No. Um, so I raced, um, it was in 2006. Uh, I don't remember that if it was how many years, couple three maybe i don't know i, I yeah. know you hit raced the old go-kart and then you raced allison's rocket so yeah so i did that for a couple of years and then i ended up choosing sports over racing um and then a couple of years ago at our cousin's wedding um john and kathy nord they had john had his race car in the back behind the um what do you call that the tarp no the gazebo for the yeah kind of like at the end of the aisle um and so I drove it from the shop to there and that was my first time driving in the car and you know I was all jacked I was like oh my god I gotta get one of these and then I haven't I mean I've always like talked to dad and said like oh I want to race but it was never like in the right time or in the right budget but I just finished school this year nursing school so now now's the right time yeah so kind of probably a surprise for a lot of the fans out there that don't know that you've purchased a card so what's the plans for this 2024 season so i'll probably run the tour and then uh we'll probably take maybe some uh some of july off and spend it at the lake that's usually what we do and then i always get the itch so then usually august and september and october we'll we'll hit some tracks and do some specials, but we, we actually had a second car uh, for quite a few years, uh, just sitting in storage and uh, had wondered many times what to do with it. And so then Anna kept talking about wanting to race and wanting to race. And I thought, well, heck I've got all the parts to make a, I mean, I bought it as a turnkey car. I robbed the motor out of it one year when I was blowing up a lot of motors and, so, I mean, now we've got some motors built up again. And so I thought, well, heck, I wouldn't take too much to put it together. I don't know if it'll be super competitive, but it'll be something to get her out on the track and get some seat time in and, you know, kind of make a decision if if she wants to keep racing and, and you know, where we want to go with that. And uh, depending on how it goes, if, if, uh, if we don't have good luck getting that second car going, uh, you know, I'll maybe just put her in my car for the second half of the summer or something so i mean it's uh to me i i kind of have always liked having somebody in the family racing it's something me and my dad started doing since the 70s so you know it's pretty pretty uh a lot of fun for all of us and and we we have a lot of fun with it and and um and it's really nice to see a lot of my friends that i don't normally see very often if i see them at the racetrack so i like right. to see i like to say that it's kind of like the Cleveland love language is dirt track racing. <laughs> it's a great way to look at it for sure. So are you pretty nervous? Or are you excited to get behind the wheel? Um, yeah, I'm nervous, but I'm excited. Kind of gotcha. just feeling all the feelings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I... That was kind of when I, when I first behind, got behind the wheel of one of my friend's race cars and yeah, it was very, very nerve wracking at first, but uh, once you got on the track, it was just like, all right, this, this feels natural. Yeah. Yeah. One good, I mean, you... I have no problem going fast. The corners is just what I feel I need to work on. Not okay. going into the wall at any. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you just moved to St. Cloud and I know they have a couple of tracks nearby. So you kind of plan to try to tackle those tracks or maybe kind of stick closer to your home tracks where you grew up? Um, dad, wouldn't you say probably like Fergus and then St. Cloud? Yeah. Yeah. So for us, our closest super stock track is, is, uh, Fergus Falls. Um, but they don't run us every week. So we'll, we'll try and catch the shows we can. I don't know if uh, we'll see how it goes here late in the summer. If the second car will make it out to Fergus at all, maybe, maybe for a September show or something possibly, but, um, you know, with the 100 there, it's, it's really close and handy, but, that's also when I'm my busiest at my job is that part of September. So some years it's not always so easy. Um, but other than that, you know, Alexander is really a little over an hour away and it's about the same distance from Breckenridge as it is from our Lake place. So, you know, we, I've always had the idea that we'd race Alex a lot. And then usually it's, 
Saturday at the lake and there's a bunch of people out and it's tough to rip ourselves away from the lake to, to go to the racetrack. Um, so I think probably a lot more maybe in Sauk Rapids and, and running the, the track down there, the, uh, uh, they really, the Granite City Motor Park, they've got a great payoff for Super Socks this year and um you know affordable chassis right there so you know my car builders are there so there's an opportunity to maybe just leave the second car down there and something like that possibly so we haven't quite got everything worked out we figured we'll just get get uh get working on the second one and see where we go with it so but i, I think probably those tracks you know i i love going to aberdeen I love going on the tour. That is so fun to go race with people. You only see once a year and Anna just loves it. And, you know, eight tracks in a, in 11 nights, we feel like we're big NASCAR guys, you know, <laughs> running around and uh, it's kind of fun. It's a real family thing. A lot of guys that you only see once a year, but if you rip your car up, they'll, they'll come over and help. And a lot of guys, you know, have the, the haulers where they can, they can rebuild your car for you and, and whatnot. So, I mean, it's really been, um, kind of kind of a hit and miss there's not really a close points racing track other than maybe alexandria over at viking speedway so um you know for the most part i think um it's more probably just traveling around to specials and really kind of the the ambiance of racing where there's a big crowd and a lot of a lot of action and big money you know i always kind of like to just go hang out with the big dogs so <laughs> yeah that, that super stock tour is kind of fun to follow and kind of like fun that is kind of condensed into a couple weekends and so i i always see you guys kind of like traveling on on there and seeing all the pictures um yeah allison i know you you started a family so obviously yeah. racing may have taken a back seat so how how involved are you with the racing program as of now not not very much um i even sit back sometimes when dad and anna are out racing just to stay home with my family but i do like to go a couple times a year um drag my kids there uh my my son he does like en enjoy watching so it's fun to see their expressions and have them enjoy it too just like I did as a kid. When a lot of the racing families that I talk to that like have sisters for instance they they know all their car stuff and are able to work on the car and so I assume you both have a good working knowledge of working on race cars. I like to say I my expertise is in fixing bodywork and tires and dad deals with the motor <laughs> about the same <laughs> yeah. i'm sure some nights you get some good practice on the body work oh yeah yep. <laughs> yep. yeah there, yeah I, unfortunately that com that comes into play more often than we would like it to yep. are there any uh specific race nights that kind of stick out throughout the last several years as far as like career moments or anything like that uh i would say the last thing i remember well, like a big thing is when when dad won his last feature in Fargo. Oh, God, that was a long time ago. <laughs> I know, but Grandpa Jean, because so it was me, dad and Grandpa Jean. And so Grandpa Jean and I walked away because we thought dad, like, I don't know what the deal was, but we walked away. We didn't even know that dad won. And we were wondering grandpa and I we were like what is taking him so long like what is he doing and he pulled back to the pits with a trophy and he's like I won <laughs> <laughs> you know grandpa and I are just la 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 I'm like no idea <laughs> I would say how how do you how do you leave a race early with your dad racing at the front of the field potentially <laughs> I have no idea <laughs> oh yeah. man any other moments uh, for you, Al, that kind of stick out? You know, um, so a couple of things like that. That last feature win was 2011. So it's it's really been, we have been racing just on pure entertainment and kind of the joy of racing. I mean, it's something that I, I love to do. I've loved it my whole life. I could just as well sit in the stands and watch a race as sit in the race car and race the race. I mean, I, I enjoy both so much and I always have. Um, so, you know, yeah, that, that probably was my last win, you know, and then too, I, I, I did pick up one track championship, uh, in 1993 when I was a, a lot younger and a lot more energy and a lot more time. And, um, you know, you come to realize how, how hard it is. I've raced with guys for 30 years that have never won a track championship. And some of them have only won maybe one or two features, 
Uh, so, you know, it makes you really grateful when we had those years where we were winning three, four features a year and, and really, uh, racing in the top, you know, three at every track when we'd be, you know, going three nights a week and stuff, it really makes you appreciate, um, you know, some of the luck we had and some of the, some of the people that have been around and, and whatnot. But yeah, I, I would say probably, um, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's several good ones, um, you know, I ripped the rear end out of the car one night in Lisbon, um, got up on the high side into some greasy stuff and, 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 uh, thought it would stick and it didn't. And, and so that was, um, that was one of my, um, less than shining moments, but, uh, you know, sometimes the fans pay for that. So, I mean, you gotta, if you can't, you know, if you can't put on a show, you gotta be the show or whatever. So, <laughs> you know, um, sometimes you just hang it out. And, uh, I rode up on the wall at Superior a couple of years ago. And, uh, and we were racing the next night. And, and so that one was kind of, uh, um, we were surprised that we didn't wreck more stuff. I mean, we wrecked a pile, but nothing major on the frame. So that was, that was kind of nice. And, um, so yeah, there's been a few of those, probably my, the most fun though, really lately has been the sites Memorial. Um, you know, I was pretty lucky because I got to race with John sites um, in the nineties and he would come to Lisbon all the time. Him and Brad Sang would come down there. And, and, you know, for a lot of us guys, those guys that were traveling, chasing national points, when they'd come through, it was, it was, you were kind of in awe because the, 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 the ability for them guys to do that race 70, 80, 90 nights a year was pretty incredible. And, and, you know, if you could race with them, that was pretty incredible. So, I was pretty grateful to be able to, uh, you know, really do thank those guys up in Grand Forks for letting us run the sites because a lot of us had raced with John, uh, you know, back in the day and being able to, to, to race that, I really felt pretty honored um, to have been there and, and raced with some of those guys. So. Yeah. I would also like to add that I say my special season is my favorite season. Um, Dennis does such a good job with the series and it's just so fun and just to see your friends and then it's just it's nice having a four-day race weekend you know mm -hmm. yeah absolutely those three or four especially when you travel with some of the same people from track to track that makes it a lot of fun yeah absolutely yep. when of course during the off season you I so you guys traveling to all sorts of various races. Do you kind of have like some marquee events that you always like to go to? I think I saw you guys like at the Chili Bowl one year, something like that. Yeah. So dad and I went the first time in 1998, which there was the 12th annual Chili Bowl. That's how long ago it was. And, um, and it was, so we didn't know much about it, you know, kind of a bunch of just, uh, I don't know, you know, Hodunks from North Dakota. We didn't didn't know, so we show up on Saturday and had no idea that it, it was even a two day deal. There wasn't a lot of stuff out on the internet back then, so I think Dad used to follow like Hoseheads, you know, racing page or whatever for sprint car stuff, and 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 you know, and so he used to follow a lot of it. So we just got in the basically got in the car and drove down there Friday night after work and drove all night. Showed up you know, that afternoon and, and they were already racing when we got there. And, um, it was pretty cool that first year, dad and I, uh, we didn't have any stands. They were sold out. And so we got pit passes and we wandered around the pits. And then that very first year there was a wreck. We were on the up down ramp watching the races there. Cause there's nowhere really where else to watch. And there was a wreck. So dad and I went out and helped roll over a bunch of sprint cars. And I, kind of smacked him and said, Hey dad, let's go to the infield. So we kind of shot into the infield, not realizing that you had to have press credentials to be down there. So uh, as we get into the pits, uh, we're hanging out and Palmer Berger was alive back then photographer from Grand Forks. And so he spotted us and he said, Hey, Hey, throw your guys' stuff under these tables here and, and kind of hang out in the middle of the photographers and maybe they won't catch you. And so dad and I just hung out there for the, so we, we went to that 1998 chili bowl and, and we watched the entire a main from the infield. And then better yet, when they brought all the drivers in that made the a main for introductions, we were standing, what we thought was some tables was actually the stage. So um, Palmer grabbed a Sharpie and my, my t-shirt and handed it to everybody that made the a main that night. So 
Uh, so that was pretty, pretty spectacular. And we, we pretty much had season tickets, you know, we've had tickets there ever since. And, uh, so some years, uh, we go some years, um, uh, different family and friends go last couple of years, Brad Bierke and his bunch from, from Harwood been going. And, and so I think there was nine of them that went this year with that group. And, but we're, we're actually have, have tickets on the front straight away, four rows up right at the start finish line. So pretty pretty spectacular and i've got a great group of people we sit with every year when we go and and so yeah that's that's something we always done and then i don't know before dad died we started going to the thaw brawl down in down in illinois usually in march like around the end of march dad's birthday is march 30th and so we would always try and find a race around his birthday and and go do that and and so that was uh, kind of a couple we do in the winter josh johnson uh, I like to go racing with Josh in the off season when I'm not racing myself, he's not racing. We usually try and find a couple of, uh, races to go to, to get the fix over, you know, usually in the springtime or something, we'll try and get the little race and fix out of our system and, and go do that. And so, yeah, there's been a lot of great races, you know, uh, over the years, some years we're down at the, we were down in Arizona for the races down there. Some years we're in Florida for speed weeks and, uh, try and always catch a little winter jive and kind of you know get the fix in out, in out of us and kind of kind of have some fun so in some years the girls come with some years not we've been doing the dome down in st louis the last few years and we took this year off and we took the chili bowl off and got to do some other things and probably hit them again this next coming year the the dates for the some of those races fall in the right time or the wrong time for us as a family so you know it's all all pretty good so i don't know there's a lot of a lot of racing we'll go, i'll go anywhere so yeah oh yeah yeah, there's racing all year round, and I, I usually take a little bit of a break once October hits, and it's like, yeah, I'm good for kind of just laying low for a few months, so. Um, yeah. but <clears throat> speaking of people, I, you guys, I see a lot of pictures of you guys with the Shockers. Can you tell talk about that connection a little bit? Yeah, so um, I, well, Allison and I, we both grew up in Myron's Race Shop, um, and then... When the boys were 10 and 11, I was their nanny. And then I was kind of their nanny. I think it was three or four summers. Um, and then like in the winter when Myron and Casey would take vacations and I would go and stay with the boys for a week. And they, for me anyways, they've kind of grown into like the little brothers I never had. So yeah. And then dad was always working, helping and being Myron's pit crew. But yeah. Awesome. Sorry, because I always see, like, especially in Fergus Falls, like, where they race quite a bit, usually yeah. around their pit area. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Really good, good family to be around. They're, they're growing in their racing, too. And it's going to be a, fun to see what they do over the next couple of years. And uh, as far as any other people that are part of your pit crew or sponsors, feel free to give them a shout out. You know, it's pretty much like, so Brent, Brent and Jesse Poles camp from, from Wapton here, they own Valley Fab Repair and Brent races a mod, you know, uh, from time to time. And uh, I think he'd like to race a lot more than he gets to get out. And I'd like to race a lot more than he gets to get out, but you know, the responsibilities of life, sometimes we can't, but yeah, I've been friends with Brent since he started. And, and uh, so, you know, Valley Fab and Repair, I always put them on my car. Uh, they help me out in the summer. If I, if I wreck some junk or whatever, they'll, they'll rent will usually kind of drop everything and squeeze me into the shop and help me get fixed up, whether it's fixing my trailer or pickup or whatever. And, and then usually just, you know, we got our own little side business, GW drain service. I've had it for 20 years and little, little, uh, side business and that's helped pay for racing and help pay for the lake place and stuff. And so, uh, kind of about it, you know, we, we had many years where we had lots of sponsors and, I think for guys who are racing every week, they need to make sure that they're out there and they have that sponsorship for us. It actually was almost easier to not have sponsors because then we can kind of turn on and off the racing switch as we, uh, kind of, as we want to. So, um, that's pretty good. So yeah, it's, uh, it's been really good. And, and, uh, you know, I've got a lot of friends who just help me out. I mean, that's the thing, you know, it's, uh, Harry Johnson. I've known him since, uh, I don't know, the early nineties when we were all racing together at, at We Town when that was open and then Fargo and, and, you know, Harry's been setting up, he's set up every set of gears for me in my race car that I've ever had. So, you know, he, he does a lot of stuff for me and I always big shout out to Harry for that. So, um, and, and yeah, a lot of people, I mean, I've had, uh, uh tons of people over the years, 
um, you know, helping out. There's just, there's just so many of them, you know? So, um, yeah, I, one, one buddy Dickerson land and cattle, uh, uh, it was kind of a joke. Uh, it was somebody did a billboard one year for his birthday and they put a billboard calling it Dickerson land and cattle. And, and so I, I, he's been storing my stuff for me for a couple of years. So I put, put one year, I put, uh, Dickerson land cattle and storage on the race car, you know, and he didn't have any storage garages, but he stores his buddy's stuff. So a uh, big shout out to Dick Dickerson for that. So, you know, it's kind of, kind of mostly fun stuff. So. There you go. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I guess the last question I have for you all is how does mom feel about Anna getting behind the wheel this year of a race car? Well, let's, <laughs> I wasn't the fastest. <laughs> And I talked a lot of smack when I raced go-karts. So like even today, she, um, <laughs> I was talking to Alex on the phone about it and mom was just in the background, you know, like, well, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Kind of just even keel, just kind of waiting and see. <laughs> yeah. So, we'll yeah, see so, so I... Angie, Angie actually drove uh, a few powder puffs over the years out in Lisbon when, when we were running powder puffs. And, uh, and so she's been in the race car before herself. And, um, I think for, for Anna, I, I think I took her a little more serious about wanting to race when she went, once she went skydiving, I think for me, that kind of, she really, um, kind of jumped out. She's went twice now and, in seven and months. it really, what's that? In seven months. <laughs> yep. So, so I, I, I kind of thought, well, she's, she's a little more fearless than she was as a child who she talked a lot and <laughs> didn't really push the gas pedal down very hard in the go-kart days and and uh so so I I, I felt like she kind of restored my confidence in her and and um, <laughs> honestly she's such good friends with so many people in the in so many of the families that are in a super stock class I just I just thought you know she she deserves to just go out there and have some fun and and kind of you know enjoy it a little bit and and feel feel what it feels like to be racing with the crowd because you know there's a whole lot of racetrack moms that that are out there that she's real close with and and I think they're gonna all have a lot of fun with it too and I know like Tim Johnson I he's you know Timmy and 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 Andrew you know they're they're definitely always helping us out at the track and I know they'll they'll help Anna out and Anna's run some some. I think she did the half marathon last year with Tim's wife, Jennifer. So, you know, a lot of, uh, um, you know, a lot of good, really good quality relationships that, that Anna's developed, you know, while we're racing together with people that I don't really even know. So it's been a lot of fun. So, and then actually, you know, uh, like Dylan Nelson, both girls were racing go-karts when Dylan was kind of tearing up the go-kart tracks. And so, you know, we've known, uh, you know, Scott and Dylan for a lot of years since kids were little and, and, you know, so she's got some good, good friendships there built up and yeah, it's just, it's going to be a blast, you know, and I know John and Joe Hinkmeyer are going to, you know, help out whenever I ask them to. And, and so it's just, it's going to be great and racing, you know, racing in, uh, you know, at Sock Rapids, James Trantina and stuff. I know those guys are all going to help us out as much as we can. I mean, that's really the, the family of the super stock class. So, you know, Good deal. I, I when I saw you went skydiving twice in seven months, I was like, there ain't no way I'd be doing that. <laughs> my next thing, I think it's going to be my present to myself when I graduate from RN, but it's called wing walking and you can only do it in Washington um, in the U.S. But so you go up in this old, you know, crickety airplane and like mid flight, you get out of the cockpit and you walk up and you go stand on top of the wings and then you can strap in and it like does three sixties. And <laughs> I think that's next. Gosh. I think Dad you'll do just fine in a race car, Al. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> I'm good in a race car myself. I might go skydiving. I we we talked about it. I I'd maybe consider skydiving. I don't know. That's uh I'm kind of afraid of heights, but I think I could maybe pull it off just to do it with the kid, maybe. So, you know. So I am actually afraid of heights. Like if I'm on a canyon, I'm afraid of heights, you know, because if you fall, you're going to tumble and then, you know, you're going to lay there in misery. But if you jump out of an airplane and your parachute doesn't open, you're not going to know by the time you hit the ground. <laughs> so. Fair point. <laughs> Fair point. Yes. So like, I guess I have one more question. Like with the go-kart racing, did you and Allison, did you and Anna race against each other then? No. No. no, we were in different because she's three and a half years older than me. So we were in different age classes. 
Oh, gotcha. Yep. So she raced with like Jesse Skalicki and kind yeah. of that. Yep, Tori. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So there is no there's no sibling rivalry or anything like that. No. Nope. <laughs> I was like, that's probably a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would have been uh that would have been more expensive. But yeah, it was pretty good, you know. So actually, um just to touch back on the whole shocker thing, uh mm -hmm. When I used to share a shop with one of Myron's cousins, Stu Shocker, when he was racing. That would have been, I don't know, 1992, 93, right when we first moved to Breckenridge. And so somewhere, I don't know, 94, 95, 96 maybe is when Myron started racing. So, you know, we were kind of all racing. A bunch of us all got into it at the same time. Darren, Celine, and there was just a whole bunch of guys in town here that were doing it. Quinn Schreiber was racing mod fours and he was building cars and so we really had a, a pretty good racing community right in town and uh so when i quit racing for five years in 2001 myron had just gotten his first late model so because i'd kind of been around a late model i started helping with the late model and kind of had we had the luck of traveling with him a lot in his hauler when when he was racing for national points and won the national championship in his street stock so i mean uh we we really went pretty far back to the where the boys were just born you know and and anna and allison were both just little so you know they were both babies too pretty much so i mean uh it's been uh it's been a lot of fun so yeah it's always fun seeing you all at the track always fun talking with the shockers as well i d definitely uh, race fans or drivers if you ever see the cleveland family be sure to stop over and say hi very nice people to talk to and looking forward to seeing you guys during the 2024 season, hopefully several times. Yeah. Yes. Hey, I have a question for you. Sure. How, how did you like that Daytona the beach uh, half marathon? It was fun. I was not prepared for the humidity though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a pretty hot one. So and there's not a yeah. tree anywhere for a while. <laughs> right. Well, and I forgot to take like an energy gel. So I was low on energy to finish it. And like when you're sweating profusely, like a mile and a half in, it's like, this is going to be a long, long race. <laughs> yeah. Pretty spectacular though, to just to run on the banking at the track. And, you know, I went up the hill and went all the way up to the wall while I was running the half marathon and, and uh, just, that was a great, uh, I always said I was going to race Daytona. I just never know it was going to be on foot. So, <laughs> you know, I say not everyone can say that they've ran on the racetrack or been on the racetrack itself. So, yep. Yep. So yeah, it was pretty neat. So good. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. All, all of you for taking some yep. time out of your schedules uh, before oh, the race thank season you. starts and looking forward to seeing you all throughout the summer. You bet. Yeah. We'll see you later, Mason. It's awesome. Thank Appreciate you. it. Yep. Thanks. Take care. You bet. You Thanks.